Let's look at question 10 of our general physics examination revision question. Question 10 here says, a rock is suspended from a string and it accelerates downward. Which of the following statements concerning the tension in the string is true? A, the tension points downward. That's the first thing there. B, the tension is less than the weight of the rock. C, the tension is equal to the weight of the rock. D, the tension is greater than the weight of the rock. E, the tension is independent of the magnitude of the rock's acceleration. All right, so here's the question. Let's try to solve this. So solution to this question, solution. In this question here, they said a rock is suspended on a string. So all we have to do is to try to use a diagram to express this. So let's say I have this. Um, so I'm drawing this this way just to show that the rock is irregular, right? Let me call this a rock. So I have a rock here. And they said this rock is suspended on a string. So I'll just do this. All right. All right, so you have string here. What I have here is a string. All right, the rock is suspended on a string. They said later, and they said it accelerates downward. All right, now if you have a rock, just as you have here, suspended on a string, and then this rock accelerates downward, what are the forces that will act on a rock attached to a string? and later accelerates downward. What are the forces that will act on this? Now, I will draw a free body diagram. That's simply a diagram showing the forces acting on this rock. The first thing you want to notice is that the weight will be coming downward here. So weight comes downward like, it, like this. And of course, the weight is as, a, as an effect of the Earth's gravitational pull on the rock. So we have the rock's weight, that's W, which is equal to, we know that weight is equal to mass times gravity so you have weight coming downwards okay also we know that for an object that is suspended by a string you have tension going in the opposite direction so you have tension pointing upwards again they said that this rock moves with a particular acceleration downwards for this question here the formula would use is simply that the summation of forces from newton's second law of motion we know that force f is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, in a case like this, where you have different forces, so tension is simply a force on a stretched string or spring, right? Whenever you have a string or a spring, the force on it is called a tension. So tension is also force. And you can know that because tension is measured in Newton. Also, weight is a type of force, right? Is caused by the Earth's gravitational pull on the mass of a body. And of course, weight is also in Newton. So that tells you that weight, tension, and force are the same thing. Now, from Newton's second law of motion, this is from Newton's second law, from Newton's second law of motion, second law of motion, we know that force, as I said earlier, it's equal to mass times acceleration. Now, for this case, you want to note something that in this, for this particular diagram here, you have two forces, weight and tension. So what do you do? We'd have to modify this equation to give you that the sum, that sigma of the forces F is equal to mass and acceleration. So basically, this is the formula you use when you have a number of forces. You have to sum the forces. What's the sum of force? The sum of the forces is simply equal to, now all you have to do is this. What we have here is simply a vertical, or what we have here is simply two vertical forces, one going up, one coming down. And we know that gravity it will be pulling on this rock. And gravity pulls this rock downwards like this. So gravity pulls this rock downwards. Now, all we have to do is simple. Any force that goes in the same direction downwards is taken as positive. Meanwhile, any force that goes in the opposite direction, that's upwards, is taken as negative. So I'm having positive W and negative T because negative T is going in the opposite direction as the Earth's pull on the rock.
So W is equal to weight coming downwards, same direction, minus T going upwards, opposite direction of, of the Earth's gravitational pull on the mass of the rock. But, but we know that weight, W, it's equal to mass times gravity. So hence, we can have that the summation of forces, sigma F, it's equal to, I'll replace weight with mass times gravity minus T. So I have this. Now, let me go back and call this equation 1 or equation I. I'll simply put, put this value, put the value of sigma F into equation I. If I do that, recall that we said from I that sigma F is equal to mass times acceleration. What value of sigma F? Mg minus T. So I'm having this as Mg minus T is equal to mass times acceleration. From here, all I have to do is to make T, the extension, to be subject of the formula. And why am I doing that? Because if I come to the question here, you can see it says the tension points, the tension is, the tension is, the tension is. Look at all the options are saying the tension is. So let's know what the formula for the tension is in this case. To do that, all I have to do is move tension over here. All right. To be having mg is equal to ma minus t becomes plus t. Let's make tension subject of the formula. All we have to do is move this over here. So you have that mass times gravity. Positive Ma becomes negative Ma. It's equal to tension. So basically, we are saying this. We are saying that the tension, T, is equal to the difference between the weight and the product of mass and acceleration. So you have this. All right, so here's your formula for tension, this one here. Yep, let me just do this real quick. So you have this. All right. So this is the formula for tension. If you want to, you can see factorize this. So T is equal to, there's M, there's M. So if I bring out M, I'm left with what there? G minus A. So this becomes the formula for tension. Now with this, let's compare with our options. Let me write the option here again. Let me write the formula for T. T is equal to Mg minus ma the first thing says that the tension points downwards that's not true as i showed you earlier tension points upwards the b part says the tension is less than the weight of the rock is that correct when we say tension is less than the weight of the rock now don't forget that this one here represented the weight of the rock we said weight is equal to mg so in essence t is equal to mg's weight minus ma from here, we can see that for us, for us to get a tension, we'll subtract Ma from weight. In essence, weight, W, is greater than tension, all right? Because for us to get tension, you must subtract a value from weight. Let's say the weight is 5 minus, let's say the value of Ma is 2. We'll have that T is equal to 3, so you can see here. So this value is lesser than the weight, all right? So yes. That's the, that's the option there. That tension is lesser than weight. So let's see. Yep, it's less than the weight of the rock. I think this is the correct answer. So yes, this is the correct answer. Tension is equal to the weight of the rock. No, it's not equal in this case. So they're not equal. It's the weight of the rock minus Ma. So this is not correct. Tension is greater than the weight of the rock. Nope, it's less than. Tension is independent of the magnitude of the rock's acceleration. No. Tension still depends on the value of E, as you can see here. This value of A will also determine the value of tension. So this is not correct. So the answer there is B, that the tension is less than the weight of the rock. So basically, this is how we answer this question, all right? All right, so as usual, let me give you a task for you to do. So you have question 11 here. Here's your task. It says a block of mass, M, capital M, is hung by ropes as shown. The system is in equilibrium. The point O represents the knot. The junction of the the point O represents the knot, the junction of the three ropes. Which of the following statements is true concerning the magnitudes of the three 
forces in equilibrium. So you have your options here. Try to solve this question. Leave your answer in the comment section and I'll tell you if you're correct or not. All right. Okay, guys. So don't forget that as usual, if you enjoyed this video, do well to hit the like button, right? Give this video a thumbs up. Also leave a comment. I give you a question. Solve the question. Leave your answer in the comment section and I'll tell you if you're correct or not. Don't forget to also subscribe. If it's your first time here, or you're yet to subscribe, please do want to subscribe, hit the bell icon and select all so that you get notified whenever we upload new content. And of course, do want to share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. Thank you and see you in our next class.